welcome to the first Smart Grid seminar for this quarter, spring 2021. Our speaker today is Professor Fang Sing Li from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Before we introduce the speaker, I want to show you this uh, the list of presentations for this quarter. Our next uh, seminar is next week, same time, 2.30. And the speaker is uh, Professor Ross Body from UT Austin. Uh, this quarter we are uh, we have some speakers from China and Australia, so it should be uh, very interesting. We're very happy to have the Professor Fan Sing Li to speak with us today. He received his uh, bachelor and master degrees from Southeast University in Nanjing, China. Uh, he had worked at APB Consulting from 2001 to 2005 as a senior engineer and then a principal engineer. He's currently a faculty, a full professor at the University of uh, Tennessee, Knoxville, uh, where he is the James McConnell Professor in Electrical Engineering. Uh, his research interests include renewable integration, demand response, power markets, power system control, and power system computing. So today he's going to talk about a large scale test bed for power grid uh, controls. So, uh, Professor Lee, I'll uh, pass the, uh, I'll let you share your slides. Thank you, Chen Wu. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, I wanna thank uh, uh, Dr. Liang Ming for inviting me to give this uh, talk for your smart grid seminar at the Precor Institute for Energy at Stanford. And I'm very honored to be a guest speaker here. Um, I also want to thank uh, uh, Chen Wu and Wahila to provide the logistic support to my seminar and uh, Chen Wu's uh, introduction. Um, uh, the title of my presentation is uh, Current Large Scale Testbed LTB as a Virtual Power Grid for Closed Loop Controls in Research and Testing. This testbed is a commonly known as the current test bed, LTB in the rest of this presentation and in the research community in uh, electric power system. This work of current LTB is not possible without the funding support from current, which I will mention a little bit late, uh, a little bit more details later on. Current LTB is a big project by a great project team. Um, I'm very grateful to our team with several main contributors as follows. The first one is Dr. Kevin Tomasovic, who co-leads the current LTB project and, and is also the current overall director. Kevin initiated the idea of developing cur current LTB back to 2015 and then asked me to drive this work. I'm also grateful for his uh, trust of me to lead the effort. Also, I want to thank uh, Dr. Han Tao Cui, who is the chief technologist for this uh, effort. Uh, Han Tao is my former PhD student and now the research assistant professor at uh, Current. And he is a very brilliant young man and will be an assistant professor, tenure track assistant professor at Oklahoma State University starting this fall semester. Also, I want to thank uh, Dr. Joe Cha and uh, Ali Abu as uh, senior technical advisors for current LTB, and certainly many other faculty members and graduate students within current contribute to the work as well. I'm uh, really, really fortunate to work with all of them on this current LTB project. Okay, uh, next I wanna borrow a minute to briefly talk about uh, my department and my university. My school is uh, University of Tennessee at Knoxville at the UT or UTK. Uh, it was established in 1794, even four years before the establishment of the state of Tennessee. So we have a really long history. We are best known to general public for our magnific magnificent stadium, which can hold more than 100,000 people. So it's uh, our landmark. If you have a chance to visit us here in the future, I will definitely show you around our campus and this uh, uh, huge building, huge stadium. Um, our department of EECS is located in the Mi new Mingkao building. Um, 
uh, opened in 2012. Uh, we have about 50 faculty members with four US NAE members and 10 plus IEEE fellows. In the power area, we have five professors in power system and five in power electronics. And uh, the department is the host of and the headquarter of uh, current research center. Okay, our ECS department uh, current existing undergrad student enrollment reached about uh, 800 and we have uh, 170 PhD uh, students. Our research venture per faculty reached uh, more than half a million uh, uh, as of uh, uh, fiscal year 19. Okay. Uh, so we are ranked pretty high in some measures uh, in terms of PhD students per faculty members and uh, research expenditure per faculty members. Okay, all right. So uh, now uh, let's talk about uh, current C U R E N T. This is a single R. Okay. Uh, so it stands for Center for Ultra Wide Area Resilient Electric Energy Transmission Networks. See, uh, like I mentioned. Oh, excuse me. It's a single R. Uh, you know, university engineering professors couldn't do spelling very well. So when we realized we missed one R, then that's too late. Okay, so now we try avoid to uh, talk about uh, uh, current versus currently. Okay, uh, all right. Anyway, uh, current is uh, funded by U.S. National Science Foundation uh, Engineering Research Center program. Uh, uh, and its uh, funding comes from um, both US NSF and Department of Energy. Excuse me. The lead university of current research center uh, is uh, University of Tennessee with three partner schools, uh, RPI, Northeastern, and Tuskegee. Our base budget is $4 million per year from 2011 to 2021. Yes, this is the, the 10th and the final year of current. Uh, it's the first and uh, excuse me, the first and only NSF ERC uh, dedicated to bulk power system research. And we have uh, more than 30 uh, industrial members. Okay. Uh, here's uh, uh, some uh, uh, introduction of current vision. Uh, it is to develop a control and modeling approach for a nationwide grid, which is uh, fully monitored and dynamically controlled for high efficiency, high reliability, low cost, better accommodation of renewable sources, and full utilization of storage and responsive load. Uh, also, from the educational side, our mission is to produce new generation of electric power and energy system engineering leaders with a global perspective coming from diverse background. Here is an overview of the uh, system. Uh, the current uh, research scheme include three planes, uh, fundamental knowledge, enabling technology, and engineered systems. And they interact with the four different uh, research thrusts, monitoring, modeling, control, and actuation. Here, the, the engineered system basically includes hardware test bed or HTB, that's another test bed, and large scale test bed, which is uh, software based. Uh, test beds will drive the center's research program via uh, system specifications and a closed loop scenario studies. Background, why current LTB or why we want to build this uh, large scale test bed? The researchers in power system community often struggle to obtain realistic data for research since we don't really own or operate any power grid. Also, researchers like us need to use uh, multiple tools to manually create interactions among different uh, software packages to achieve our research goals. For instance, if someone wants to test a real-time control algorithm, he or she needs to use a dynamic simulation tool to produce a mock measurement signals that will be fed to 
another piece of software as control input. Um, and then the output from uh, such a control module will be fed back to dynamic simulator to verify the control algorithm. During this process, either a manual or some scripts need to be developed to facilitate the closed loop interaction. So our goal is to make this process automate. So then the user can uh, make one button click or maybe a few button clicks to finish the closed loop interaction. Okay, the, uh, here the closed loop uh, automated interaction is really the key. Okay, this differs uh, this uh, large scale test bed from uh, uh, typical simulation tools. Okay. Um, meanwhile, we also want some standardized models and the test systems with high penetration renewables for easy benchmark among different research results. So in short, LTP is closed loop simulation platform plus large scale system models. Uh, this slide shows the overall architecture of LTB modules. Uh, on the top, we have uh, the current models with uh, HVDC overlays, uh, as well as wind scenarios for our uh, research. On the bottom, we have uh, modules representing conventional EMS functions, such as uh, state estimators, uh, uh, dispatch and visualization modules. Okay. On the left, we have possible simulation engines for power system dynamic studies, such as our in-house Andes tool, yeah. or OPERRT's Ephesus Sim, uh, Great Dines, uh, LL Lawrence Livermore National Labs Great Dine tool, or other customized modules. Okay. On the right, we have uh, this new research algorithm uh, and controls, which represent the uh, research results from uh, uh, the users of this LTB. All these four blocks are connected by data streaming and a communication network module, uh, which I will elaborate later on. Here are some design considerations, such as uh, interoperability, uh, with uh, a modular, uh, modular uh, architecture. Also, uh, we want to consider measurement-based control uh, interactions uh, to simulate a PMU sampling and the streaming. We also need a large-scale uh, models, uh, such as uh, a thousand bus North American uh, power grid model with uh, projected uh, uh, HVDC overlays. Here, I want to talk a, a few words about the grid simulation engine. Uh, right now, we have our own in-house uh, Python-based uh, tool called uh, Andes, which has a built-in library for fast prototyping and so on. So Andes is like a white box to us, so we can do uh, whatever we want uh, for fast uh, prototyping. Uh, of modules and the routines. And also we have uh, interface to other uh, research uh, tools like uh, grid dyne uh, developed in C++ uh, with features like a connection with uh, Modelica and uh, high performance computing. Also uh, we interface with uh, commercial tools like OpenRT, EFSSM, which supports Modelica, Python interface, and so on. Uh, our goal is uh, to use our own uh, white box Python-based engine Andes for fast prototyping uh, in a relatively smaller system, like a few hundred bus to a thousand bus. Then once verified, we can utilize uh, uh, more commercial grid tools for uh, larger, much larger scale verification. Uh, in the scale of tens of thousands of buses. Here, I want to talk a bit more about our in-house tool called uh, Andes. Available functions include power flow for AC-DC hybrid system, time domain integration, eigen analysis, and some plotting data streaming uh, interface. Uh, we also have uh, 
unique features like a symbolic uh, modeling. Uh, and uh, for available models, we have 49 uh, models included, such as general, gen class, and uh, PV models, and uh, wind turbine models. And we support uh, several uh, data formats, like our own uh, NDS data format, or, or PSSE, uh, and uh, MATLAB uh, format. Uh, supported the uh, test system include MPCC 39 and one to 140 bus system, and also WAC, uh, EI, and ERCOT uh, system with 50% uh, wind and 30% uh, 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 PV models. Um, uh, open source distribution can be found here. In the past uh, a couple of years, uh, we developed a hybrid symbolic numerical framework uh, to enhance and improve the previous dynamic simulation engine of Andes, uh, or this is basically the new generation of Andes. Okay. Uh, symbolic programming basically means that um, writing code for complex mathematical equations is just like typing an equation in Word. Okay, once you uh, follow the symbolic modeling uh, language, then uh, we have code generation, which will generate the code such as uh, solving uh, power flow, solving Jacobian, solving uh, uh, numerical integration for power system dynamics. So um, uh, in other words, once you type the equations, uh, then uh, the symbolic library will generate the code, Python code, for the programmer or the user of this tool. Uh, this significantly reduces the effort of researchers so they can focus more on research works on their own rather than spending a lot of time in coding and debugging. Uh, certainly, we also need traditional numerical programming in the loop uh, for some maybe customized functions uh, this is uh, shown in the blue uh, blocks here. Okay, this, uh, the yellowish block uh, represents the symbolic uh, programming part. Okay, um, so this is, uh, uh, that's why this approach is called a hybrid symbolic numerical framework. Okay. As the engine is uh, uh, really the critical part in this platform, we. Uh, made a lot of verifications uh, for the, our simulation engine. Uh, here uh, it shows uh, our benchmark uh, with uh, MPCC 140 bus system using TSAP, TS, which is a, a commercial tool uh, for power system uh, dynamics. Okay, as uh, shown in those two diagrams, the dynamic simulation results match very well with the commercial, uh, the, with results from commercial tools like TSET. Uh, the left diagram shows the frequency at bus uh, 22 and 25. Well, we're supposed to have uh, four curves, okay? Uh, but we seemingly have only two curves here. The reason is that the two curves from Andes and TSET match with each other very well. So the uh, fully, uh, uh, overlapped, uh, and so then that's why it looks like only two curves here, but actually uh, there are four. Uh, the same results can be observed uh, for the right diagram for the terminal voltage at uh, bus 21 to 25. Next, I want to talk about the LTB PMU module. Okay. Uh, this slide shows the Merriman uh, model building in L Building an LTB called an LTB PMU. Uh, after the simulation engine performs the dynamic simulation, the ideal results will be processed in the following four steps. Uh, first, uh, we added a delayed model. Then we uh, added some measurement noise uh, into the uh, data, and then we may consider loss of data uh, at uh, some probability. Uh, then we obtain the realistic uh, 
data or non-idea measurement data. So then this we can send this uh, uh, non-idea realistic uh, measurement data uh, to other modules like uh, a communication module or um, other uh, uh, modules for further uh, processing. So this slide shows the LTP width, which is a web-based uh, realization. Um, uh, for power system researchers, the visualization tool helped us uh, test our research code and identify problems or even motivate us to find new research ideas. Uh, in, uh, later on, I will show a few uh, short videos which you will get a better idea of the realization tool. We also developed uh, several system models and uh, various uh, wind scenarios. We start with uh, NREL's National Renewable Energy Laboratories wind speed data for future uh, wind farm uh, locations and the wind dynamic modeling guidelines. Uh, eventually, we built the 50% wind penetration in WAC and 50% in ERCOT and 50% in EI for wind, and uh, as well as 30% uh, solar penetration on top of that as uh, future scenarios. Certainly, we build uh, uh, many other uh, scenarios in between 0% uh, penetration to 80% uh, renewable penetration. All these three systems are integrated together to form what we call the thousand bus current North American system. Uh, we also use the MISO, Midwest, uh, uh, Mid-Continental ISO uh, study results of the multi-terminal HVDC topology as shown in the figure here. Next, I want to talk about uh, the uh, data streaming part for uh, the LTB. Uh, we basically have uh, two approaches. The first is the DIME. DIME stands for distributed message environment for passing data between asynchronous heterogeneous modules. Uh, it is uh, a point-to-point -point data streaming uh, approach for faster prototyping. prototyping. For example, if one module wants to send something to uh, another module, so like a LTB a PMU may want to send something to realization, then uh, this can be done with a time uh, module. And also we have LTB net. Uh, in LTB net, uh, we uh, employed the, a tool called the mini net to develop the communication network details for uh, uh, LTB. Uh, it's based on standard IP based uh, uh, streaming or detailed communication network. Next, I want to discuss a little bit about the DIME. Uh, it is a Python-based uh, transparent uh, streaming server, and uh, it supports uh, unlimited uh, MATLAB or Python or C++ uh, clients. Um, uh, developers can import a DIME API and then gain uh, a streaming capability. Uh, in this uh, diagram, uh, here we show the LTB width here on the left, and then the open PDC on the right, uh, and the other modules on the here, and that, that's the Andes and the other modules here. So as long as uh, you follow the streaming protocol and the streaming server will help uh, delivering data from uh, one to another. LTB net, uh, uh, this is the emulation of communication network. In the last uh, few years, we completed the software defined communication network emulation, which is uh, now integrated in the loop of LTB. Uh, from the viewpoint of module, Dependence. Uh, we have a four layer uh, architecture with a physical power system layer at the bottom, and then measurement layer, communication layer, and the application layer like EMS functions or control functions. Okay. 
Um, about the communication topology, we constructed a nationwide communication network. Uh, I want to mention that uh, there's really no publicly available model about uh, a nationwide black bone communication system. So we use this uh, ACM report here um, to uh, uh, develop our uh, US communication network and use it to emulate the communication system in the current grid. So now we can bring all the pieces together to form the data flow diagram in uh, LTB, okay? Uh, we start with the large scale system model and high penetration scenarios. Uh, both are fed to Andes and then uh, the dynamic uh, simulation results or the, the, the data uh, uh, output uh, will be fed to LTB PMU uh, through Dime streaming server. Okay, at uh, LTB PMU, uh, we create realistic non-idea uh, measurement data from the idea data, basically by embedding noise, embedding some uh, communication delays or missing signals. So then what we get here is uh, realistic measurement data. And that measurement data will be forwarded to uh, different modules such as OpenPTC for uh, storing the data and uh, or LTB realization to realize uh, the system. And also it can be forwarded to the new control algorithm. That's basically the uh, researcher's results. And then in this new control algorithm, the, uh, based on the research, uh, maybe some parameters will be modified. Uh, so then that modified parameters will be sent back all the way through a uh, dime server back to Andes. Uh, so then uh, the Andes will make adjustment in its dynamic simulation, just like in reality, the control signal being taken and the actions being taken. So then that will uh, make the system perform differently. So then the new updated uh, uh, dynamic simulation results uh, will be sent to LTB PMU and then here, there is some uh, processing to generate uh, uh, non-ideal realistic uh, uh, measurement data. And then we repeat this loop. So everything happens uh, within this loop and happens in real time. So that's why we call this a closed loop simulation. Uh, this is uh, really the fundamental difference of this platform from uh, um, the simulation tool, okay. Uh, for a typical simulation tool, it is open loop, but here it is a closed loop. So also I want to mention this new control algorithm uh, is uh, based on researchers results. So we basically provide this platform as a, a environment for the uh, researchers. So then they can focus on their uh, research work rather than dealing with all the simulations and, uh, and uh, uh, mock merriment creation. Now let's uh, play a quick uh, demo to illustrate what the LTB can show you with uh, this LTB visualization as a front end presentation. Uh, so left side shows the uncontrolled case and the right side shows the controlled case uh, for WAC system damping control with wind generators. Um, uh, this case study uh, is a good example showing the LTB platform can demonstrate the advantage of new control algorithms. Uh, also, it helps uh, researchers to identify uh, and view the uh, simulation results Okay, so after some disturbance, there's a system oscillation and then this controlled case will uh, bring the system back to steady state a, a lot of quicker 
than the uncontrolled case. Okay, and also we have a plotting uh, uh, window to show the uh, tie line flows. Okay, you can also see that um, for the controlled case, uh, the dynamics dies out a lot quicker. Uh, so that's why we call this uh, a research demonstration platform. Okay, the actual algorithm about this research can be found in this paper below here. Uh, and, uh, and also I wanna mention that uh, it helps the researchers to view and identify uh, problems during research. For example, uh, without this front end realization, it is uh, very difficult for someone to find out what's going on or what's going wrong uh, among the enormously large volume of data at hundreds of buses and uh, at the data rate of 20 or 30 snapshots per second. Next, I wanna show another uh, quick video uh, of uh, uh, a project that uh, a deliberate cyber attack may cause the system to separate into two islands, which are not necessary. So the, the blinking, uh, the blinking dots are the PMUs with uh, malicious bad data injection. The right diagram, uh, sub, uh, this uh, small window here, uh, shows the maliciously injected data causing operator to think the system frequency deviates from the threshold to trigger a special protection scheme of separation. So, which means the system is actually good, but uh, because of the false data uh, injection attack, the operator uh, thinks there's something wrong and then started the, the uh, system separation, which is not necessary. All right. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. The third and the last uh, uh, very short video demonstrates the impact of communication delay on control. The left uh, part shows the case of uh, no delay. And the right case shows the uh, uh, 300 millisecond delay under denial of service attack, for example. Let me play the video. So after some disturbance happens, the previously working algorithm assuming no delay will not work. You see here. Oh. So without delay, when everything communications idea, uh, it works, but uh, with a 300 millisecond delay, then the algorithm doesn't work. So this is uh, as an example to demonstrate what this platform can show or can help researchers uh, on their research works. Here's a summary of uh, LTB achievement. Uh, we finished uh, uh, a number of modules, including Andy's simulation engine, Dime server, LTV PMU module, uh, a number of current test system, uh, LTP net for communication system emulation, LTP visualization, and also we finished uh, uh, a number of research integration for demonstration, and I'm. Um, also pleased to report that uh, current LTB won the 2020 uh, R&D 100 award last year. Uh, here I wanna briefly mention LTB as a driver for research. Uh, as a platform development, uh, our researchers are main developers, okay? So, uh, uh, and also we have a research driven development and then in turn the platform enhanced the understanding of the models methods and systems. And we also have large scale system and the scenarios uh, which are uh, used uh, in research case and inspire research works that use data to calibrating uh, our models. Okay. Uh, uh, finally, I wanna uh, summarize uh, the difference of uh, traditional simulation studies versus LTB based approach. Uh, in terms of prototyping, uh, traditional approach is more open loop uh, based on MATLAB or Simulink. Uh, LTB approach is, can uh, integrate diff many different uh, programming languages. Right now we have MATLAB, we have Python and C++ for different modules. 
uh, data interface. Uh, we have online data streaming between heterogeneous modules, like I mentioned uh, previously, developed uh, maybe in different programming language. And a traditional approach is usually the uh, offline or no automated uh, interface. You have to do it uh, uh, manually. Uh, communication network typically none uh, in traditional uh, simulators, and we have a built-in uh, LTP net. Uh, for closed loop the testing and uh, systemic testing, usually uh, it's a, a manual uh, simulator controller loop. Uh, however, uh, in LTB, we have real time closed loop uh, uh, testing environment uh, and we have ready to use modules. Okay, so this one shows uh, the, our virtual control room at the current research center located. Uh, uh, at the fourth, first floor of Minkow building in the Department of EES, University of Tennessee. Here are some uh, ongoing users of LTP. We have five software maintenance support agreements signed uh, in the last uh, year, academic year. Uh, the users from the universities, national labs, as well as uh, industrial uh, users. Um, it also played a critical role in uh, uh, for uh, funding, uh, such as in six externally uh, funded projects totaling $4.5 million. And also it's being used in uh, one of LLNL's uh, project. And it also uh, supports a recent NSF of career project by uh, uh, one of our faculty members, Dr. Pogar at UT. Here's the roadmap for LTP. As you may see, we have taken uh, consistent progress towards the Gen 3 goal. That's the NSF terminology. Uh, so since this is our year 10, so we're basically here. Okay, we, uh, you can see that this is a progressive effort. We started uh, uh, several years ago from 20% uh, renewable penetration to 50% to 80% regarding the scenario development, and also uh, in terms of uh, LTP platform functionality, we uh, developed a, a lot of functions over time. And now uh, the LTP is uh, quite a, a mature uh, tool. Uh, in the, right now it's in the maintenance mode. Some future directions, certainly we need some minor enhancements such as enhancing uh, load models for large scale system. Right now we have the IP and the motor load model and uh, maybe we wanna enhance it with some demand response model there. We wanna refine realization for uh, various uh, use case. We wanna improve uh, the computational efficiency and uh, some possible uh, larger uh, uh, enhancement may include uh, integration with uh, our uh, hardware test bed, which is a hardware based uh, test platform. We may link it with uh, economic and uh, market tools. Uh, uh, with, uh, and uh, uh, we may link distribution system simulation models to make a co-simulation environment. Uh, we are seeking some uh, external grant to uh, a larger grant to uh, develop uh, major uh, modules like uh, this bottom three uh, shown here. Um, LTB is available at GitHub. This location is open source, well documented. And the majority of this con content can be found in this paper published uh, in IEEE Power and Energy magazine. And also we have several related technical papers uh, shown listed here. And uh, this acknowledgement, uh, we wanna thank our uh, funding support from uh, USNSF and the DOE, as well as our project uh, uh, main team members. Um, we wanna thank our uh, industrial members that's here. And this is uh, the presentation. Now we're open for Q&A.
turn on. Yeah, the thank you for the so. presentation, uh, Professor Lee. Yeah. I think there is sure. one question in the Q and A. Uh, how is the false data injected? Mm. I think he was talking about a cyber attack. Right. Is yeah. The demonstrator attack realistic? Uh, oh, yeah. That is uh, how easy is this attack? Today? Oh, okay. Uh, actually, we uh, in this research, uh, it's assumed that uh, the, uh, the false data in injection attacks uh, is, is already there. So we didn't really uh uh discuss uh how that can be implemented uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh however because because well because this is a really uh the platform we present this platform it can do such such things it's up to the researchers in cybersecurity to uh, uh figure out uh, what's going on uh, related to false data injection attack but i want to mention that yet uh, cyber attack uh, uh, did happen in several uh, grids. The, the most well-known one is the Ukraine system collapse, and it's uh, uh, very likely a cyber attack. And also it uh, happened in uh, uh, Brazil uh, grid. So uh, it is uh, getting more realistic and it's happening. Okay. All right. I, I, I think uh, we can look at the, this question in a different way. Uh, how, how did the researchers simulate the data? Is it based on some realistic data they obtained? Uh, yeah, so for example, they can uh, hijack uh, some previous event data. That's basically uh, shown here. So if the attacker uh, obtains, somehow obtains the uh, system variables in a previous events that you mm. you really had to separate the system and then they inject the system so then uh, the operator may think oh there's uh, something bad is happening so then we need to separate the system although you don't really need to do that or the things mm. could be even worse like uh, uh, they hijack the, the data and then inject uh, uh, very uh, misleading uh, data or bad data and then uh, makes the operator think uh, uh, something really severe uh, happening, then they may trip the load and or trip the generator. So I see. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, second question. Uh, so could you please clarify how you validated the generation of synthetic data? Um, okay, so uh, based, okay, so I'm not 100% uh, sure about the question. So I guess uh, you mean, how do we uh, uh, verify the results is good? So we basically verified and benchmarked the dynamic simulation tool with the uh, several commercial tool like a PSSE and a TSET. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and this, some of the test system uh, are well benchmarked with uh, the uh, real system operation. You mentioned at the end of your presentation there, mm -hmm. there are currently five users. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so let's say if Stanford wants to be a user, how, how what kind of uh, procedure? Okay, it's uh, actually uh, it's, it's open source, so you can just go there, download it, and then follow some open source uh, uh, agreement. And uh, for mm -hmm. those users, uh, they basically uh, they want to get the support. So the uh, uh, agreement, really, the maintenance mm -hmm. and the support agreement. Yeah. Are, are, are there real data involved? Uh, you know. The archive in the system. That uh, what do you NDA. mean, real data? Uh, real, the, real data from the actual uh, real yeah. grid operation. Yes. Uh, no, not really, uh, because many times that data uh, very are very sensitive. So, uh, mm. but we do have uh, the uh, uh, the North American system and different versions of that. Uh, we we benchmarked with. Uh, uh, 
as, as much as we can with uh, commercial tools and uh, some typical like uh, events, we well-known event and we know mm -hmm. what's the consequence. So then we uh, perform the study, make sure it produce results aligned with uh, uh, what uh, happened in the real system. Yeah. So that's probably the way for this industry. I see. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the panelists? Leon, do you have any questions? Oh, there's one more. Can we get some economic application? application. Uh, economic application. So I assume you mean uh, the uh, re, uh, economic dispatch or some economic study for power grid. Uh, so if that's the case, uh, I can talk a little bit about actually our ongoing project. We uh, we uh, develop. We are developing a. Uh, economic uh, dispatch up to a uh, five minutes interval. So then we actually had a preliminary study of the uh, economic dispatch. So we can show the dispatch results uh, in the realization platform. But we, because in the demonstration, we can't let everybody uh, wait five minutes to see the updated results. So we have uh, some function like a speedy the, Display. So uh, in the demonstration, we update the, the five minute dispatch results every two or three seconds. So then the users will see uh, some continuous control map changing every two or three seconds. And uh, uh, that's uh, being used uh, for uh, one of the ongoing projects. Uh, we should have. Uh, that module integrated, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, by the uh, by the same uh, next year this time. Thank you. If there are no more questions, uh, let's thank the speaker for the wonderful presentation. Thank you, Chimu and uh, Mahila, and also Leon. Uh, thank you all. Yeah. Okay. Have a thank nice you. day. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, bye.